Hey everyone, welcome to lesson 22. We are still talking about the plurals of German nouns and I have split it up into several parts. As you know, we are today talking about part four and in our overview of noun categories, let me quickly remind you that we have already been dealing with nouns that exist only in singular or plural. And in the last lesson, I showed you those two categories here together nouns that do not take a suffix in their plural form, but may or may not take a vowel change. In this today's lesson, I would like to show you when and how to use the suffix e, which similar to no suffix can also either occur with or without a vowel change. And it depends on exactly the same things as it did in the previous two categories. So there are going to be some aspects that you will recognize some patterns that you can recognize. Let's dive right in. All of the nouns I'm going to show you today are going to take the suffix e to the end of them when we transform them into plural. They may or may not change their vowel as well. We will apply the suffix e mainly to so-called monosyllabic nouns, meaning nouns that only consist of one syllable. Not every noun that consists of just one syllable will take the suffix e, but most of the nouns with the suffix e are monosyllabic. <laughs> I hope it makes sense what I just said. So, we will form the plurals of many monosyllabic nouns by adding e to the end. On top of that, there are also a couple of masculine nouns who take one of those one, two, three, four, five typical endings which can either be spelled in the typical French way, E-U-R, or the German way, E-R, but the pronunciation of these two endings is the same, Ör, Ich, Ich, and Ling, which actually does not occur too often, but there are a couple of vocabulary items in the German language that apply these endings here. Let me show you a couple of them. Let's start reading together one more time, yeah? Please try to pronounce after me. Der Tisch, die Tische. Der Fisch, die Fische. Der Hund, die Hunde. Das Boot, die Boote. Der Berg, die Berge. Der Friseur, die Friseure. Or with the alternative spelling underneath, but same meaning, Friseur with O umlaut. Der Pfirsich, die Pfirsiche. Der König, die Könige, and der Feigling, die Feiglinge. Now let's analyze this list according to what I explained to you about the rules. Up until Berg, Berge, you will see all of the nouns in this list are monosyllabic. They have one syllable only. And they often, but not always, tend to be either masculine or neuter in this category. We will add e to the end, tisch, tische, fisch, fische, hund, hunde, boot, boote, but we do nothing to the rest of the noun. And interestingly, fish in English is a noun that is considered uncountable. One fish, two fishes. Do you say two fishes? I think I once read that fish is not supposed to be countable in English, just like sheep. One sheep, two sh It is countable, but it also doesn't change the form. That is, that is it, yes. Thank you for reminding me. I, I felt your thoughts come through the screen at me. Okay, but starting from friseur, friseur, E-U-R or E-R, here we have a noun with a typical ending from the list on top here, where we just add an E to the end in order to form the plural. Für sich, the ending ich plus E, ich plus E, Könige, or Ling plus e, feig linge. So far, so easy. Monosyllabic nouns, often masculine or neuter, or nouns with those specific noun endings here that are always going to take e to the end. So you probably have a good guess by now when we're going to take suffix e plus vowel change, and it is it it follows the same pattern as you already heard me explain in the previous lesson, lesson 21, we will have a vowel change when the nouns contain um, one of the vowels A, O or U 
which do have an equivalent in umlaut, but this change doesn't necessarily have to occur. So having a monosyllabic noun with a, o or u in it very likely changes that vowel to umlaut, but it doesn't necessarily do so. But you're going to have an e as the suffix for plural. What do these nouns typically look like? Let's read together, okay? Die Hand, die Hände, der Platz, die Plätze, der Arzt, die Ärzte. I'll read that one more time. It tends to be a bit more tricky to pronounce. Der Arzt, die Ärzte, der Ball, die Bälle, die Maus, die Mäuse. Here, please pay attention that AU is pronounced AU. Makes sense. EU is not pronounced EU, it's pronounced OI, which doesn't make sense. Maus, Mäuse. Die Kuh, die Kühe. Der Stuhl, die Stühle. Der Schrank, die Schränke. Der Sohn, die Söhne. Der Ton, die Töne. Und der Zahn, die Zähne. So here you can observe. Also these, all of them, Hand, Platz, Arzt, Ball, Maus, Kuh, etc. are monosyllabic words. They are often masculine, sometimes neuter, sometimes feminine. So the gender in itself doesn't tell us what to do with it. But monosyllabic nouns usually take E as the suffix to them. And since you see that all of them contain a vowel with an equivalent in umlaut, A, 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 U, O, so all of them are represented here, those do change to umlaut in the plural form before we add E to the end. But returning back to the previous list, they don't necessarily have to. Here, there is no equivalent in umlaut, so we cannot take a vowel change. There is no E umlaut, E with two dots. It just doesn't exist. Same as for E umlaut, doesn't exist. But there is an umlaut for U, and still we don't say Hünde in plural, we say Hunde. Also, we do not say Böte in plural, we say Bote, although also O has an equivalent in umlaut. So, A, O or U may change to umlaut, but don't necessarily have to. And I think this category was rather easy to learn. Uh, we have already finished all of the theory about this lesson. I know that once I talk about the next one or two categories, you will probably start to feel a little bit confused again. But please try to please try to bear through it because I promise at the end of all of the categories that I'll introduce to you, I'm going to make one big fat summary and revision lesson one more time with plenty of exercises. And I will try to draw something like a roadmap for you to follow, to guide your thinking pattern when thinking about plurals. So at the end of that, I, I hope I am very confident that most of your confusion will have vanished by then. Please just try to bear with me for a little while longer, okay? If you would like to have that lesson material, you can download it for free on my Patreon account. Uh, next lesson is also going to be followed by another, um, by another exercise for you guys to do. I would love it if you check it out. Looking forward to seeing you there. Tschüss!